This is the Turf Zone Podcast, your central information and news hub, bringing together professionals from turf associations across multiple states to share things to help you in your business. Brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Turf Grass Council of North Carolina. This episode is sponsored in part by Bysod, world-class service on demand. Visit us online at www.bysod.com. Now, let's get in the zone. Welcome to the Turf Zone. In this episode, we feature an article titled, Making the Most of Team Member Check-Ins, written by Neil Glatt, CSP, ASM. The very best managers and team leaders are those who check in with their team members on a regular basis. Yet even experienced leaders can miss opportunities for employee engagement and success without a great game plan for these conversations. Here's how I help managers make the most of team member check-ins. Consistent. Team member check-ins are often launched with a formal announcement as a new way of doing things, which rarely sticks long-term. For both managers and employees, this experience will feel awkward for a while. Unfortunately, many quit check-ins before they become consistent. In order to have successful team member check-ins, consistency needs to happen first. By developing a habit of formally sitting down for a conversation, the clumsiness of a new conversation will give way to trust and excitement that is required for growth and improvement. Leaders starting or restarting check-ins should worry less about what results are we getting from this exercise and more about how often we are completing this exercise. Just like physical exercise, results come from consistent effort over sustained periods of time rather than extreme effort on occasion. Frequent. Team member check-ins also need to happen on a regular basis to help job performance. Unfortunately, 76% of employees report that their performance is formally reviewed by their manager once a year or less, according to Gallup. And deep down, we all know that a one-hour conversation couldn't possibly increase performance for an entire year. I like to have weekly check-ins with those that I'm coaching. With one-hour weekly conversations, there's ample time and space to discuss all the things we need to cover. More on that in a minute. And frequent enough to responsively adjust to changes as they arise. Instead of a boss reviewing last year's performance, I'm a coach helping performance for the next play of the game. Future focused. Nobody is perfect. So when we check in with the people we lead, the goal shouldn't be to dissect what mistakes have been made in the past because there's nothing that can be done to solve them. In the same way, reviewing what was accomplished since the last check-in isn't helpful either. That's because the goal is to increase future performance. To do so requires focusing on the future rather than the past. I prefer to discuss what will be accomplished in the coming weeks, months, and years. On a weekly basis, asking about when and how work will be completed is key to realizing performance. By anticipating obstacles, team leaders can identify opportunities to provide materials, equipment, information, or support to prevent issues from occurring. And by forecasting months and years into the future, employees can feel that they're working toward a significant goal and growing in their career in a direction that will bring them fulfillment. This is where professional and personal development can be explored and encouraged. Holistic. For too long, team member check-ins have focused solely on work. Employees today want to be valued for more than just their contribution, and team leaders can build successful teams by caring for people holistically. We all know that big issues in our personal life can hinder our performance at work, So creating a place to discuss them in our check-ins is how we can help people as people. I love Gallup's model of well-being, which identifies five areas in our lives that are interconnected and inseparable. Career, financial, social, community, and physical. All five areas of well-being should be discussed with team members to ensure they can be their best selves both at work and in life. When team members help people find success in all five areas, They become trusted mentors who care and receive the best possible performance from their people. Starting team check-ins the right way will be difficult, time-consuming, and awkward, but it's the only way to provide the support and encouragement that people need to be their best. If I can ever help you or your organization, 
please feel free to reach out. Neil Glatt is the managing partner of Grow the Bench, an online training platform for the green industry. You can learn more about him and his solutions at www.nealgatt.com. For all resources associated with this article, check out our show notes. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at theturfzone.com. You've been listening to The Turf Zone. For more episodes of The Turf Zone, visit theturfzone.com and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.